what is faith? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things that are not seen. And I'm real heavy into this thing on faith and hope because our Bible teachers and our preachers have not taught us the truth about faith and hope. And they've mixed up the words. How many know that we've mixed up the words on soul and spirit? Amen. We mix up the words on faith and hope. We get all mixed up. And the Bible doesn't mix up the words, but I've got to say this, honey. The translators have. So one of the reasons that I love this new computer is because I can just put that one button down and I can find out what the Greek or the Hebrew for the word I'm looking at, what it really said. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to depend on the translator anymore. Somebody praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. Faith is an act. Did you hear it? Turn to the one next to you and say, faith is an act. Faith is an act. Hope is belief. Boy, they did get it mixed up. We'll get into it more as, as time goes on. I want you to see this now. Action produces evidence and substance. Did you hear me? Evidence, substance, things that we can see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. That comes by faith. Things that are by hope are different. Faith is the present tense of the future tense verb hope. Write that down if you've never written it down before. Faith is the present tense of the future tense verse hope. Hope is the future tense. I think I got that. I think I can prove it a little bit. That's better. Is the future tense of the present tense verb faith. Those two sentences right there will summarize the whole thing. Hope is for the future. Faith is for the now. Faith is what you exercise now to make it happen. Watch my hand. By faith, Davy Baugh turns on and off the overhead projector. At the moment, Dave Ebaugh is hoping that the electricity will be there when he puts out his hand. And by faith, he made it work. I'll give you a list of guys who did it and made it work by faith. You understand me now? And by faith, you make it work. Listen. We are people of faith. Because we make it work. We don't just hope, well, I hope God will do it for me. No, sir. We get out and we pray. We listen to good Christian music. We study books. We look for answers. And we make it work. We make it work by faith. Hope is not good enough for us. But some things just won't come no matter how hard we work for them. Because they're in the prerogative of God. And he says, "That's I'm going to do this on the day I want it done. Amen. Not on the day you want it done. So you're going to have to hope for it. And not exercise faith for it. Now here's why this is so thrilling to me. I am a man of faith, and for my whole life, I have been able to accomplish what I set my mind for. You understand me? I've given you a little quick example there. What my mind was set, I found out how to do it, and did it, and was successful at it, and got lots of rewards for it over my life. But there are some things I have not been able to accomplish. No matter how hard I try. You understand me? And I had to have an answer for that. You know why? That was a challenge to my faith. I've been successful right along, and then all of a sudden, here was something I couldn't have. So why couldn't I have it? Was there something wrong with me? Come on. Haven't you thought that? Haven't you thought that same way? I can't come into that. I'm trying. I want. And it's not here. And I've done all the right things. I've gone to all the right meetings. I sang the right songs. I put the money in the, in the preacher's. You know what? And still didn't work. I have.
have to have an answer. I'm a kind of a man that I can't live without an answer. When I see something I don't know, I go after that until I find it. And so here's what I found. Some of the things that I think I ought to have by faith, God says, nope, they're by hope. And the one that I want so much right now is that energy. Yes. Amen. And I want that energy to come from God right now. Amen. And I'm hoping that this is the right period for this is the feast of... And I'm hoping He's going to send it today. Amen. But I can do everything that's right. Let me tell you what I did. First thing I did was take a bath. And I ate a good breakfast. And I got ready. Of course, the all this was ready, you know. <laughs> A lot of the physical things were done, and I picked up my all, all of my papers and things like that. And my wife reminded me, reminded me of a couple other things I forgot. Oh, praise the Lord for a faithful wife who can remind you of the things you didn't get done. So I went back and did them. Then I came here and I did all the things by faith, but I can't make the energy of God come down from heaven until He said He sends it as a, a, a fellow. A, a, Fellow named Gabe, Gabe Gabriel, and he's got a little trumpet up there. And man, he's been practicing, but they haven't let him out of the sound booth yet. <laughs> and one of these days, he's going to come out of the sound booth and God say, "Let me hear your sound, Gabriel." And he's going to send a trumpet blast around the world, and he's going to send his energy, and there's going to be some changes made. I don't know about you, but I kind of like that song. There'll be some changes made today. Amen. I'm going to change my way of living, if that ain't enough. I'm even going to change the way I strut my stuff. You know I mean? <laughs> All right, because there are going to be some changes made. Yes, sir, there are. And it's right around the corner, but I don't get to tell Gabriel when to blow it. And it just might be that it starts at 1.30. <laughs> All right. Well, by hope. You know what I'm saying? Right. By hope. All right. Now, God makes hope happen without our input. We make faith happen with God's input. Did you get it? God makes it happen. We make it happen. God doesn't need us. But we need God. Now that's the truth of the matter, but there's one little change that has to be identified. God said there's one thing that I can't do. There's one thing I can't do. God said I just can't do. I cannot destroy anything. I can only love and build. Did you hear me? God is not a destroyer. He's not hateful. He cannot hate. He cannot destroy. He cannot ruin anything. But how many know there are things in God's way that have got to be removed? So God says, I got the answer. I will create a destroyer. Put him on the payroll. And I give him a name called Red Dragon, Old Servant, Devil, or Satan. And, I'm, and I won't let him do anything unless first he asks me permission. Come on. Now it may be that your devil is in a fight with your God. But my devil is not in a fight with my God. My devil is in a fight with me. Yes, sir. And my God will only let my devil come as far as my God says. <laughs> you can come thus far, no farther. you got to stop. My devil's on a chain. And God counts the links. And he says, you can have a few more links. <laughs> Whoop, come back here a little. Out you go. You know what I'm talking about? And somebody said, yeah, Eva, but I looked at your devil once and he... And he's just a roaring lion. He doesn't even have any teeth. <laughs> but you, see, honey, I don't know that. When he roars, 
He makes me think he's got big teeth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, he does. Now, what's the purpose of the devil? Well, the purpose of the devil is to scare the hell out of you. <laughs> Turn the one ask you and tell no, don't do that. <laughs> Your mother don't want to use that word. But it's not cussing. I wasn't cussing when I said that. It was theologically correct. The purpose of the devil is to scare the hell out of you. And God lets him go to scare the hell out of you. Come on. To change us from what we are to what we ought to be to make us into something. Okay, that makes sense. As we go along. So, here it is. Yeah. This is released, and God said, I'm going to get you all the way. God said, I have to worry about all the tax of the devil. All you've got to do is resist it. How many people call me and say the devil's after me, making you go away? No. Uh -uh. God said, that isn't the way it is, honey. Do you know that even the Jewish carpenter had to talk to the devil? Come on. He had to fight him. You resist him. Now, faith and grace, I'll just say that again. Faith and grace save the spirit. Faith and works save the soul. Hope is for the salvation of the body. At the moment, you can only hope for the salvation of your body. Come on. Now you exercise faith, and God has already exercised His grace. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Save your spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus come into your heart. How does Jesus get in your heart? By grace and faith. Mm -hmm. Why? It's by grace and faith. Not a works, lest any man will boast. You remember all that. That's right. Yeah, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But then the Bible says, work out your own salvation. And how many know that working out your salvation takes faith? And you say, wait a minute, Ebar. You're mixing it all up. No, I'm not. By faith, you brought the ticket to be here. Mm -hmm. By faith, you had the work to get the energy and got the money to buy, have it in the bank so you could buy the ticket to be here. And it was all by faith. But honey, that was a lot of work. <laughs> and if you don't think it's work to come to Bible classes and to... And, 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 and to and to read these books and to study these truths, then, honey, you haven't been reading. You haven't been working at it. It takes work to make your soul change. Amen. Yes, sir, it does. It takes work. And you, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost to make those changes. All right. Now, grace and faith come to your heart. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves to give to God. Now this next one, not a work. When you hear it, when you say it, not a work. Not a work. Not a work. Not a work. Man, both. Now, the same person that said not a work, would you read the next verse? Work. 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 work without, right here. Work out your own salvation. Do that again. Work out your own salvation. Now read this one. Not a work. Now read this one. Work out your own Salvation. Would you agree that there's a conflict? <laughs> the conflict is settled when you're willing to divide the Bible into spiritual body. Those of us who've been studying the Bible for the last 20 years and have seen this difference between spiritual body, now we're not smart alecks, but we can't help but go to churches where the preacher obviously hasn't seen it. And it just... It, you, you got to watch it. You got to bite your tongue, don't you? Huh? And some people don't bite their tongue, do they? They cause trouble. But anyway, when we get with the, with the preachers that you know graduate from the seminary and haven't seen the difference between spiritual body, and they get in talk themselves in the corner, you don't have to worry about talking yourself in the corner anymore when you divide spiritual body. That's all, because then it all makes sense. The body makes sense. At the end of it, we hope for the salvation of the body. This is the one. I'm going to get it. If we hope, we're saved by hope. For we are saved by hope. I'm going to read it. We know the whole creation groans, travails together, pain together until now. Now it's not only the whole creation, but ourselves also. Who's speaking? Well, it's Paul. Paul. Uh, if you can't remember that, just remember my middle name. <coughs> but ourselves also. 
We have the first fruits of the Spirit. Do you know that James said we have a first fruits of the Spirit? Amen. All right. We have the first fruits of the Spirit. We grow within ourselves also. Waiting. You see the word waiting? You see anything that's hope is always waiting. Waiting for the adoption. How about that? The adoption. Oh, I'd love to take two hours with you on the word adoption. Maybe I wasn't that. To wit, the redemption of a body. Now, somebody says, Paul, have you been redeemed? I'm redeemed by love divine. Hallelujah. Christ is mine. Have you been redeemed? Say yes. 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 Was Paul waiting to be redeemed? Say it. Yes. Because you've been redeemed in your spirit. You're being redeemed in your soul. Paul was waiting to be redeemed in his what? Body. Not his spirit, not his soul, but his body. So, we're saved. Now, I'm going to do this again until I get this point. The body salvation comes by what? Hope. We're saved by hope in the body. And then he goes on to explain a little more about hope. He said, hope seen is not hope. Because if you can see it, it turns into faith. faith. So he says, faith is, I mean, if, you can, if you're hoping and you see something, then it's not hope. And if you see it, then don't hope for it. You already got it, is what he's saying. If you can see it, don't hope for it. How many are learning something? I am. Listen, that this is a wonderful lesson for me. We hope for that we see not. And then with patience, what's that other word? Wait. 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 Now that's another word that I'm going to have removed from the Bible. <laughs> Amen. I have formed a committee, the Harrisburg Committee, to take the scissors and remove the word patience. <laughs> that word is anathema to me. Patience. Oh, yes. I don't have time for patience. <laughs> How many know you've got to be patient? How many know we don't like it? I don't like patience. I don't want it. If there's any way I could get around it, honey, I've studied this Bible inside and out trying to find a way around patience. And it isn't there. Let me tell you. I spent enough hours to know it's not there. You, you've got to learn patience. We've got to have patience and we've got to wait for it. So that ends that for that patience thing. And I'm finished with patience. It <laughs> 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 comes from this big word here. It's a Greek word and I'm not going to get it. But all these words here, redemption, salvation, deliverance, atonement, ransom, they're all the same thing. And what they mean is salvation. They're all synonymous terms. Now, if you don't believe me, just buy a computer. That's <laughs> what it says. Now, the Bible says that that body salvation is not going to be revealed until the last time. Now, if you didn't catch that, I'm going to say it again because my Baptist friends don't like it when I teach this part of the lesson. Because they believe that all things are through Jesus at the altar when you come to the cross. Honey, that is the marvelous first step. Are you hearing it? But it doesn't produce all things. It just gets Jesus into your heart and the blood of Jesus covers your past sin and that's about it. But this is what Peter said. Now, Peter had the keys of the kingdom, right? Paul did not have the keys of the kingdom, right? Paul was waiting for the salvation of his body, right? right? Peter, on the other hand, knew his body would not be saved. You didn't catch that? Peter knew the, the whole thing, the whole story. Paul was learning the story. You didn't catch it? Now, I'm going to tell you this right now, so that let's get this straight. Paul learned the story in the city of Antioch. And he spent 15 years learning the story in the city of Antioch. And he had two marvelous, wonderful teachers named Alexander and Rufus, who were black men. Hallelujah. The sons of Simon the Cyrenian. I want to say that again. Unless you're willing to listen to a black man, you're not going to get it.
got some black people up here in our first row. All right. And I want you to know that Paul and all the verses and all of everything he ever said was because Rufus and Alexander taught it to him or the Holy Ghost took what they said and brought it to his remembrance and then he could extrapolate through the Spirit. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, why is that important? Some of you don't understand this yet. It takes all the members of the body of Christ to get this job done. Amen. Amen. Come on. And not everybody's ready socially to go into this right now. Because it's going to be red and yellow, black and white. All of God's children are going to be in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And they're all going to have a place. Yes. Now, how many of you have ever been in a service where they told you that Paul's two teachers were black men? No. Alexander and Rufus, sons of Simon the Cyrenian. You look up where the Cyrenian, he was black. Yes. Alexander and Rufus were black men. And you know what? They said, our daddy carried the cross. It was my daddy. <laughs> and put it on his shoulder. And let me tell you something. When my daddy carried the cross, he learned some lessons. He learned lessons that no white man could ever lesson, learn. And when we'd come home, he would talk to us and tell us. And teach us about what happened that day. And Paul would say, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. And it took 15 years for the Holy Ghost was ready to send Paul out to teach lessons as he began to learn from those two black men whose daddy carried the cross. I want you to know something, my dear friends. You've got to open up. You've got to be willing to hear and listen to Fred Price. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I, I'll get you. <laughs> He's got something to say. Yes. Yes, got. And all the men of God can tell you something. If you're willing to hear it. If you're willing to listen. Come on. Praise God, wonder. But the big thing is, to this inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, and it fades not away. Now it's reserved in heaven. That's my hope. Get it? But see the word reserved? How many know that an inheritance that's reserved isn't yours, but it is yours? Now if you have an inheritance that's in a trust fund reserved in the bank, can you spend it? No. Say it. Tell the other one. No. Tell the other one. You cannot spend it. Is it yours? Yes. Is it reserved? Yes. Got your name on it? Yes. Did the testator put it in for you? Yes. Well then why can't you have it? It's not the time. <laughs> Say it. It's not time. It's not the time. Mm -hmm. They're kept by faith of the power of God through the salvation that's going to be revealed. Say it. In the last time. Now that salvation is not revealed at the time of Jesus Christ. Now that's the one's hardest of all. <coughs> that salvation is revealed when? That salvation is going to be here at the end of the old age, the beginning of a new age. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I said that word. Shouldn't have said that one. Uh-oh. Well, I'll leave that one go. You see, some of you don't know this, but about 30 years ago, we used the word new age to describe the millennium. And it was using literature and the preachers all used it and that kind of stuff. Then some people got a hold of it and changed the meaning. Yeah. Now we're not allowed to use that word. See, I could never stand here and tell you I'm feeling gay. <laughs> Peter knew his own body was died before the last time, but Peter said there's going to be something revealed. It's reserved. It's an inheritance. You can't have it. But there is a generation going to get it. Hallelujah.
I'm feeling religious. <laughs> I want to talk about the generation that's going to get it. That generation's going to overcome the what? The Who was right? Peter right or was Paul right? Both. Peter said, I must put off this my tabernacle. The Lord showed me. I'll endeavor that you will be able after my, what's that word? Yes. You know he's talking about dying. Come on. Right. Peter knew he was about to die in his body. He knew that. Well, how did he know that he was about to die and he could not enter into this salvation that he had the keys to? He understood it. Got the picture now? He knew it. Well, here's your answer. It's over there in John. If you've never studied that, You'll have to go through it with me for just a little bit because it was right at the end of the book of John and Jesus had already come and he said, now, and he, you know, he's already gone through the cross and the resurrection and all this. Now he's talking to Peter again. He said, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter said, yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Ha, 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 ha. You know that I play on you. Now Jesus had said, you adopt me? You love me? My dear friends, this is one of the most important sections of the scripture as to why I believe that you've got to find out what the Bible really said, not what the translator said. Because they took these two words, turned them into love, and it's a rendition that makes absolutely no sense at all. Do you love me? Yeah, you are. You know I love you. Well, then feed the uh, lamb. Do you love me? Yeah, Lord, uh, then feed the sheep. That made no sense at all. Come on, tell the truth. Right. To you English-speaking people, it absolutely makes no sense at all, that whole dialogue. But when you see that these are Greek words, and he says, do you agape me? And he said, well, I phileo you. And he said the second time, do you agape me? And he said, yeah, well, I phileo you. And he said the third time, do you phileo me? And now Pete's upset. He's mad. It says it right there. He's upset. He's really mad. Because on the third time, he changed from agape to phileo. Now it makes sense. Now you see it. Because there's a big difference now between agape and phileo. Because Peter said, I phileo you. I can't agape me, you. Now watch this. <coughs> he said, feed the sheep. Barely, barely. I, well, hit that. There's your doubles. I say to you, when I, when I were young, when you were young, you, you, you dressed yourself and you walked where you wanted to go. When you're going to be old, they're going to dress you and they're going to bind you and they're going to take you at where you don't want to go. This faith he's signifying by what? What's the next word? Death. 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 He should glorify God. And when he's spoken this, he's a father. Now, agape lovers overcome the last enemy, which is death. Phileo lovers don't. Phileo lovers go to church, sing in the choir, study the Bible, preach good sermons, die, and go to heaven. The copy lovers, you can't find any reference of heaven holding the copy lover. I knew one guy who went there for just about three days and came back. Me! The copy lovers can't die. They don't die. There's your answer. There's a whole answer right there. Faith, hope, and love. It's got to change from faith to hope to love. Because love is your key. It's a way to king. It's a way to overcoming the last enemy, which is death. I know there's a generation going to overcome the last enemy. Amen. And what is the last enemy? Yeah. And they're going to turn from phileo lovers to become. You got it.